What's up guys? Jason up the New 80s Revolution back with the second episode, the second of probably many, the Shelf by Shelf Toy Room Tour. Last video we took care of Video Game Corner. And then I got a couple special requests as we were going through the video games. My man Christian Hafer, the Hafenator, said that he would like a uh, maybe like a top 10 list of my favorite NES games. So that will be following uh, this toy room tour. And maybe even uh, maybe even I'll put it in the middle to kind of break it up a little bit. But not there's there's like there's like a hundred thousand top 10 NES videos all over YouTube. But that's just you know. You got your standard games in there, you know, your Super Mario 3, your Contra, your Mega Man. None of those three would be in my top 10 favorite games list. So if I do one that's, you know, my own personal top 10, you're going to see some strange games in there. You're going to see games that probably don't make anybody else's top 10, but they were mine. And so I'll show you that later. We'll, uh, we'll make that video a little bit later on. But today, tonight... We're gonna take a look as we make our way along the room. We're gonna stop here and take a look at Board Game Alley. We've got a massive section of board games here and I'm gonna go through each and every one. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you things like strolling bowling strolling bowling what the heck is this why why do i have strolling bowling and why did, why was this my absolute favorite toy in the world when i was about six years old so we're going to go through the board game alley like i said take a closer look at each game talk about a little bit of history did i have it as a kid many 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 of these games i actually had as a kid and that's why i went out and uh, repurchased them some i never had some I didn't know existed, so we'll go through that and uh, we'll keep this shelf by shelf toy room tour moving along. Sit back, we're gonna take a closer look. I'm going All right mine. guys, it's board game alley time. So you remember the last video, we covered that corner right there. Here's the entrance to the room, right? So you come in off the laundry room, you walk in, you got the little guy down there playing Friday the 13th on the NES. Yes. You stroll around here and we take a look at a pretty deep section of board games. So let's go through each one. First, uh, this thing, this is obviously not a board game. Um, this Atari ET cardboard store display. Um, I have had pretty much since the beginning of this toy room. So I've, I've, that was one of the first things I added in addition to like the wrestling figures. Um, way back before I uh, got on YouTube, I was watching a lot of YouTube and one of the first major YouTubers that I watched was the Angry Video Game Nerd. Um, and he had this hanging in his game room. And, um, I found it on eBay one day and I bought it and it was super cheap. So my guess is that this was obviously during the the ET Atari game uh, you know craze or, or major marketing push. And I, I I don't know which store. I don't know if it's it's uh, exclusive to one particular store if it or if it just hung in you know many different video game stores or toy stores, but. Um, it's, it's a legit cardboard store display and I got it for cheap because, um, the guy that was selling them had a ton of them and they were still in a bag. So they were still sealed and I'm guessing that he just, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe he bought an entire collection, you know, decades ago, but this was still sealed in its original bag. It came with the instructions on how to, you know, fold it and put it together and hang it. Um, and it was like 17 bucks, you know, for, for something this old and, and this, I don't know, significant and iconic. Um, Atari, the ET, or ET, the Atari game is pretty notorious and infamous. So it's pretty cool to have this, uh, have this store display. All right, starting things off. Uh, the G.I. Joe 
live the adventure board game. Uh, you know, the beautiful artwork is probably the top reason to own this game. You know, if you, I wouldn't care if it came with no pieces, but I would still buy this just for that awesome box. A couple of bowling games coming up there, the Bowlatronic and 7-Pin Bowling. Those are, uh, if you've watched some of my earlier videos, you'd know that I was pretty much a big bowling fan ever since I was a kid. And so I would collect, or I would play with as a kid, I would play with any bowling-related game we could ever find. Um, and I'm pretty sure that I had that Bowlatronic uh, when I was a kid. A uh, little section of VCR games. Um, you can see it starts there with Top Rank Boxing. We've got an NHL VCR game. We've got a WWF WrestleMania VCR game. And then we've got an NBA game. Now, I have no idea how you play those games. I have never played them. The best part of those games is that they all come with a VHS tape of classic footage. So my guess is that the footage is part of the gameplay. Um, but I, I don't play the games, but I have watched the footage. So the, the VCR tapes are like a half hour. Um, and it's pretty awesome to just go back and see all that classic sports footage. So pretty cool. Um, coming down here, I don't know, we already talked about strolling bowling. One of my earliest memories of toys as a kid, having this, basically a wind-up game. You know, you, you wind up the ball and send him down the L and he knocks over these pins. I was fortunate enough to find it with its box. I, I love this thing. This is, an, this is iconic. When, you know, when you think of, like, the top ten toy images of my childhood, this is definitely one of them. There was a little period of time when I was collecting uh, video game related board games. So we've got, uh, these aren't necessarily board games, but we've got you know, Pac-Man puzzles and a Pac-Man card game. Every thrift store in the world has a copy of Win, Lose, or Draw. That is a um, Pictionary style game based on a TV show, a game show of the 80s. Fashion plates. Definitely an item that my sisters had growing up. Um, you, it's not a game. It's it's more like an art set. You would, you would, um, you would. I don't know. You'd have to draw like uh, I don't know dresses and stuff. Who knows? Um, Masters of the Universe Fast Dry Paint by Number set. Right. So, a couple of He-Man posters, and then you would get your your watercolor or your oil-based paints and you would paint and it unless you were an artist as a kid it would come out as an absolute mess and you would have ruined your your awesome he-man posters uh this is a couple of yeah, let me get this thing out of the way those are a couple of jumbo color forms the real ghostbusters and underneath that the masters of the universe those are a little bit uh, bigger size color form sets. We've got a Pound Puppies puzzle, a Cabbage Patch Kids puzzle, and then these, this whole section here, with the, uh, with the exception of the Muppet Babies Match game and the Pop Your Popples game. This whole section here are my color forms. Another iconic toy symbol of my childhood, color forms. Um, there was a period of time when I was, you know, really wanting to collect them and get as many as I could. I've pretty much hit the wall on color forms. In fact, I've pretty much hit the wall on board games. Um, you will not see me adding any more board games to this collection unless it's, you know, a really significant game. Another VCR game, that's NFL football. Uh, we come up here. Actually, we'll, we'll come down here. We got Mousetrap. Again... A game that took way longer to set up than to play. Uh, Bargain Hunter, kind of a uh, early early 80s credit card game. So already teaching us in the 80s to go deep into debt. My G.I. Joe Trooper Dome. No, of course this isn't a board game, but it's my G.I. Joe Tent. And uh, this was something that I always wanted as a kid. In fact, you probably remember those um, 
clubhouse style um, kits that they would sell that were basically, you know, plastic tubing and then, you know, like a vinyl tarp that would connect to the tubing and it would create a fort. Uh, this is along the same style, but more of a tent. But I always wanted those uh, plastic forts as a kid. For some reason, well, not for some reason, but pretty much every kid in the world was a fort builder back in the 80s. And um, I always wanted those playhouses. Uh, Risk, yeah. Risk was a little bit out of my league as a kid. I uh, wasn't playing much Risk, but uh, I hear it's pretty good even today. Uh, this is pretty cool. This is, uh, I showed this off when I did my wrestling collection. That's the uh, AWA Power Slam VCR wrestling game. Again, with an awesome VHS tape. I have no idea if the game itself is any good, but the VHS tape inside is pretty awesome. I did have one of these, a, uh, a Harry Blackstone Magic Kit. Uh, pretty much every kid in the 80s at some point was interested in magic. And uh, these were pretty popular. In fact, there were um, there were a few of these. There were much bigger Blackstone sets. This is a decent sized one, but it's the uh, beginner's magic set. And, uh, you know, there'd be some... You know, there's some good solid magic tricks in here that... Uh, that any kid could pull off with, with willing parents, of course, to ooh and ah as you uh, made the foam ball disappear. Uh, the, the Electronic Mall Madness game, again, one of those games that uh, probably takes forever to set up. Um, but that's in there. Trump the game. Uh, so that, that does not represent any, any views of today. Uh, pro or con uh, Trump, but um, as a kid, as like a 10-year-old kid, for some reason, I was like tailoring myself after Michael J. Fox from uh, Family Ties, so Alex Keaton, right? And Alex Keaton was this uh, young Republican, you know, financial, um, you know, very political guy, and and for some reason, I just took a major liking to him, so I tried to like, I tried to act like Michael or Alex P. Keaton around my house when I was 10 years old, and and uh, my, my parents fed into it by buying me Trump the Game, which I, I don't know a 10-year-old on the planet that ever figured out how to play Trump the Game, but when I saw this at a garage sale a couple of years ago, I grabbed it just because, uh, again, not because of any political reasons, but because it just reminded me how much of a, uh, a weirdo I was, a ki uh, I was when I was 10. Uh, perfection and Superfection, just pretty cool puzzle games. Um, Race Against the Clock, and uh, those two games I owned multiple times as a kid. You would always lose those parts, and then you'd get a you'd get a new game. So uh, I had Perfection and Superfection a few times as a kid. Simon, just your classic iconic '80s game. The image of Simon represents the '80s pretty well. Uh, the Cabbage Patch Kids Hide and Seek game. Uh, a more modern TV trivia game or TV guy. Actually, it's not modern. That's a uh, that's older. Um, I have a more modern. I have the I have the People game, which I think is a little bit more modern. But the TV guide, TV game, trivia game, uh, Monster Mash. I definitely has a kid. Um, pretty fun. Bed bugs. I absolutely had as a kid. This was fun. Uh, basically, the bed vibrates and those bugs go flying. And you're supposed to grab your color as the bugs jump all around. Loved this game as a kid. Still got an old Toys R Us sticker on there. Monster Mash was pretty cool. Um, basically, a matching game. You would you would spin that uh, spin that little uh, I don't know that little game there. That little I don't know that little spinning game and. Uh, Whatever combination, all the panels would switch and turn, and whatever combination of monster came up, you'd have to find them on, in the cards, and then you'd have to, like, you got you had these little hands with suction cups on them, and you'd, you'd have to smack the card and pick it up, and that's how you, that's how you won Monster Mash. None of these are actually from my childhood, as far as the original games. Uh, unfortunately, I, 
I, the you know I lost everything I, I had as a kid so these are all repurchased uh, I you know when I started doing the games I wanted to buy stuff that I'd had as a kid I wanted to buy stuff that I always had but then I wanted like some themes and one of my themes of board game collecting was TV show board games obviously you know I love 80s TV shows and so I wanted to buy games that went along with the TV shows. And some of these I had no idea ever, ever existed. Um, I don't recall ever knowing that the Elf board game existed. I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, we've got a Star Wars Escape from Death Star game, which, you know, what does that remind you of? I mean, that's the action figure packaging right there. That's pretty awesome. Um, we've got a Transformers game. We've got a Miami Vice game. Again, no clue that ever existed. I remember I got it for Christmas a couple years ago, or my birthday, and uh, was blown away that it actually exists. And, you know, it seems to be official. There's the two actors. Uh, the Mr. T game. That's from the cartoon Mr. T. Uh, Care Bears game, a Dukes of Hazard game, a Voltron game. There's that People board game, Rubik's Race, 13 Dead End Drive, Battleship, Scavenger Hunt, Sweet Valley High, Hotels. That's more of a uh, sort of a financial monopoly style game. Now Nerf. So we get to the Nerf section, and. Uh, I loved these Nerf sports sets as a kid. I I would play with these all day. In fact, the one that I, I have the most love for is the Nerf pool set. Um, I loved playing pool when I was a kid. And when I got this, I was about eight years old and we had a, we had a pretty long rectangular dining room table. And I would set up this Nerf pool and play pool all day on our dining room table. It was awesome. Um, so that pool set comes with two cues, it comes with the balls, it comes with a rack, and it comes with six pockets. And you would attach the pockets to your table. And then you would run like a long piece of, um, not rubber, but like a, like a stretchy spandexy material to create the rails. And so the ball wouldn't go flying off the table. It would actually bounce off this spandexy ribbon, and you you got you could turn your table into a pool table. So that was pretty great. Nerf ping pong along the same lines, great game. Um, I would actually switch out the ping pong balls because the the Nerf ping pong balls are actually Nerf, and they they're not heavy enough really to have a lot of fun with them. So I would actually switch out the Nerf ping pong game or the Nerf ping pong balls with real ping pong balls and then play the same way. You got the plastic net, you got the paddles, you could play on your dining room table. It was awesome. Air hockey, I never had. Uh, Nerf air hockey looks awesome. Concept looks great. This stuff here is what I'm talking about with the um, with the Nerf pool game. These are that, that's that rubber, you know, that spandexy material that you put all around the table. Uh, coming down, we got another Cabbage Patch doll game. Uh, Friends to the rescue. You got, you know, your classic clue. We got your classic shoots and ladders. Leverage, I'm not really sure of. I, I remember just grabbing that at, at like a, a Goodwill, you know, a bunch of years ago. I I really don't know why. I have no, no recollection of leverage. Head of the class, another classic 80s board game. Superstition. Never had this. But what a fantastic looking game. It's basically a horror game. Um, along the same lines as, you know, Mousetrap and things like that, where you gotta set up all the pieces. Again, it takes forever to set them up. And, you know, most seven year olds can't possibly do it right. And then you play, and you play for 10 minutes and it's over, and it takes you 25 minutes to set up the game. But what a great looking box. Superstition, the board game. Castle Risk, another another Risk, another version of Risk. Stratego, that's another one of those games that probably is awesome, but I never ever learned how to play as a kid. Uh, I think it's also one of those games that you always got for Christmas. 
and then never played it, you know, because I never knew how. Mystery Mansion, another uh, horror-themed game. This is 84, so let's, let's pull that out and take a look at it. Another, another good-looking horror game. The search game with a clue in each room, a secret behind every door. So I'm guessing another game that takes forever to set up. Oh, that's right. This actually doesn't come with a, a, a board. This doesn't have a game board. Basically, you put, you put together all these squares, and it makes the game board. So probably a pretty awesome game, but I'm not really playing many board games these days. Uh, come down. We got some classics. We got your Razzle. We got your Hungry Hungry Hippos. And way down there is Mr. Mouth. Now this... Mr. Mouth is another iconic childhood symbol of my youth. I had... Uh, it seemed every Christmas I got a Mr. Mouth. Um, this isn't actually... Uh, this is really a fun game. You, uh... Basically, it's like tiddlywinks, right? But with, uh, but with a, a motorized mouth, right? So you, you hook up all the hands, like so. You turn, you, you know, you put the batteries in here, you turn it on, he spins around, and as he's spinning around, his mouth opens and closes, right? And you have to, you have to get the chips in his mouth. I loved this game. I had it a million times as a kid. All right, moving on. I told you uh, stuff is just randomly placed throughout. This is my this is my growing G.I. Joe comic book collection. I've got about uh, 25 G.I. Joe comic books now. Next to that is some random G.I. Joe extras, uh, like G.I. Joe versus Transformers, a couple of the annuals. Um, Got this pretty cool, the worst of Cobra Commander graphic novel. Come along up here, we've got another bowling game. we got two more bowling games. Those are bowling dice games. So basically, uh, roll the dice, and it's kind of like Yahtzee, but for bowling. Uh, for some reason, I've got a People's Court game. We've got another... Another miss, another VCR game, the Clue Mystery VCR game. Coming along, next shelf. This will be the final shelf. Gotcha. Gotcha was a... I say rare only because it's not on eBay ever. It's definitely not rare as in, you know, valuable. I paid like 16 bucks for it when I finally found it. But Gotcha was a game that I got when I was probably 13... And, uh, once it, you know, once I got older, it was, I, I, I didn't remember having gotcha until like three years ago. And then it, it jumped back into my head and it blew my mind and I was on a search for it. I think I saw it in a catalog and I was like, oh my God, I remember that. Um, basically a race against the clock kind of game. Oh, what do we have here? Ah, oh, we've got our, we've got our Beverly Hills 90210 dolls. That's right. I am proud to say that I am a huge man fan of Beverly Hills 90210. And uh, I got three out of the six dolls. So if you'd like to stop watching now, you're welcome to. Uh, I told you that I'd like to um, focus on TV show um, board games, but I also liked video game board games as well. So I, I got a little collection of video game board games. So this is Qbert. Uh, we got Pig Pong, right? So this is another classic memory of childhood. Uh, the Pig Pong board game, basically a ping pong style game, but you use air. You squeeze these plastic little, or these rubber little pigs, and they push air out of their snouts. And you're supposed to blow a ball, which is basically tissue paper rolled up into a ball, and you're supposed to use that as the ball. It's horrible. It never works. 
You could never get any kind of actual game going with ping pong, but you know, had to have it. Uh, the dinosaur, if you remember that uh, short lived TV show, Dinosaurs, they actually made a board game for it. And again, it's another one of those games that takes forever to set up. Um, oh, you know, my collection wouldn't be complete without the Wrestling Superstars game. Pac Man, another video game style board game that's a pretty simple strategy you just go along and you know collect marbles nightmare classic horror vhs game uh, more television show games the a-team i am currently watching the a-team by the way guys and it is awesome so i will uh, continue i'm only up to like episode four but i love the show mork and mindy et the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pizza power game that my boy loves to play. Who Framed Roger Rabbit, the board game. The Knight Rider board game. Look at this. That's right. Even Knight Rider had its own board game. Remote Control. Now, that's a little bit later. I think this is like late 80s, 89, 90, when Remote Control was on MTV. Launching the careers of Adam Sandler and uh, that other guy. I don't know his name anymore. I forgot. But anyway, uh, Remote Control. Shirt Tails game. The Smurf game. Then a little sub-collection. Game Show board game. So we got the Newlywed game. We got the Price is Right. We got Scrabble. Not Scrabble as we're used to it, but the TV game show version of Scrabble. Let's make a deal. The Family Feud. Now the thing with Family Feud, it says 7th edition there. There really were multiple, multiple releases of Family Feud. Every year they would come out with a new game and like come up with new questions. So that says 7th edition. There were, there were literally seven Family Feud games. They did the same thing with the $25,000 Pyramid. Classic Concentration, one of my favorite game shows as a kid. Ms. Pac-Man, pretty much the same as Pac-Man, the board game, but the more feminine version. The new Tic-Tac-Doe, not Tic-Tac-Toe, Tic-Tac-Doe. Now, you really got to be stretching your 80s memories here. Tic-Tac-Doe was a game show that I, I think it was in syndication on, on regular TV, but it also aired on USA a lot. Uh, so basically you play Tic-Tac-Toe for money. Um, and this was the uh, board game version, Tic-Tac-Toe. Jeopardy, another one of those games that had a million versions. Uh, Wheel of Fortune, another one of those games that had a million versions. Zaxxon. All right, so how many of you, how many of you 80s arcade fans knew that there was a Zaxxon board game? Double Dare, one of the most iconic television shows in my life. I spent so much time in front of the TV watching Double Dare, just hoping and wishing that I could go on the show and win the obstacle course. How many of you guys knew Frogger had a board game? We had the Frogger board game. We'll put those guys back. Merlin, I got, uh, let me show you Merlin here, another classic 80s puzzle, electronic puzzle game. Kind of like Simon, a little bit more handheld. What else? Remember, we got some scraps along here too, all right? We got the, uh, we got this, we got the Gummy Bears Giant Card Game. All right, that's on this shelf. This, uh... Random Garfield McDonald's mug is on the shelf. There's the three He-Man guys that my, my little boy got me for Christmas. And uh, we'll come back in a minute. All right, so we'll wrap this up with a couple of last board games that I wanted to show you. Um, these are the bigger ones. Torpedo Run. Now, this I reviewed in another video. 
Uh, this thing is massive. This is a uh, part of the Floor Wars series, which I think they were probably planning on having a few more, but this is the one and only Floor Wars game in the Floor Wars series. But this thing is huge. I mean, look at those guys laid out around that mat. Massive, huge game. I actually found this at a Goodwill for like $2.99 just sitting on the shelf. I don't know if it's complete. I don't think it's complete. Um, but I, I loved this game as a kid. Here's another one of the big boys. Fireball Island. If AJ90210 is still watching, he uh, he has no idea how much I paid for this game. I uh, I have been called out a few times on my constant reminding people of how much I paid for this $300 game. I paid $1 for Fireball Island. And yes, look it up, it is a legitimate $250 to $300 board game. It is probably one of the best board games of all time. It is a 3D style game. It is an incredible game. It is an expensive game. And I found it at a garage sale for all of four quarters. And I will remind you of that until the day I die. One more little interesting thing here. I'll that down here. Now this game is called Scat Cat. So why do I have Scat Cat? What is the what is the meaning of this? This game came out in no, let's see. I can't find a date on that side. No date on that side. Don't worry, I'll get to the story in a minute. No date there. No date there. Well, I'm guessing like 1981. Scat Cat came out. And why do I have it? Well, because I found an old picture of one of my Christmases. And I was sitting in the middle of the floor. I was sitting underneath the tree. I had presents all around me. And I noticed in the picture this game. Scat Cat. Uh, I have no recollection of having it. But I found an old picture of me when I was about six years old. And I got Scat Cat that year for Christmas. So you know I'm crazy. You know I'm going to go find Scat Cat. And I did, and it was cheap. It was like 25 bucks. But I now have a game that apparently I had when I was six. And there is photographic proof of that. All right, that is, uh, that is Board Game Alley. I will come back and... Wrap it up. All right, guys. So that is that. That's Board Game Alley. That is part two of the Toy Room Shelf by Shelf Tour. Board Game Alley. I wanted to get it over with, get it done and over with. It's not the it's not the highlight of my room by any means, and um, you know, kind of took a long time to go through each game, but definitely a significant part of my collection. Significant memories. Um, lots of different style board games. Again, some come with a story, some don't. But now you know, now you have taken a look at the next couple of shelves in my room. And we'll be, uh, we'll be moving on to that last shelf there. Not last shelf of the room, of course. Last shelf of that wall. And then we're going to start making our way all around... And uh, we'll, again, we'll go through every single shelf, shelf by shelf, bringing you into my world, showing you exactly every single item that I have. We'll get back down here next week to do it again. I'll talk to you soon. Good night now.